Cisco provides an automatic option for configuring trunk links called Dynamic Trunking Protocol, or DTP. This is a Cisco-only option, which is turned on by default. Earlier, we used the command switch port mode trunk. This manually configures a trunk link. As long as this is configured on both ends of the link, the link will be a trunk. But rather than manual configuration, we can configure the link as dynamic. There are two types of dynamic configuration called auto and desirable. The results depend on what we configure at each end of this link. First, let's think about the desirable option. If this is configured, the switch actively tries to make this link a trunk link. This will succeed if the other end is also configured as desirable or auto or trunk. Let's see the configuration for this. We have two switches connected to each other. We first enter interface configuration mode. Then we configure switch port mode dynamic desirable. Although you can't see it here, the switch on the other side of the link is configured as dynamic auto. If we run show interfaces trunk, we can see that the mode is set to desirable. In the status column, we can see that this link has successfully become a trunk link. When the auto option is configured, we're telling the switch that we're happy if this interface becomes a trunk, but don't actively try to make it so. That means that if the other end tries to configure the trunk link, this interface will agree, and the interface will become a trunk port. So you see that the particular combination of settings will determine whether the link becomes a trunk or remains an access port. One recommendation I can share is to avoid configuring one side manually as a trunk and the other side manually as an access port. We can dig up a bit more information with show DTP interface. It's not particularly exciting, but it may prove useful if you're troubleshooting. DTP sends messages between the two switches to convert a link to a trunk. If we want, we can disable this entirely by configuring the interface with switch port trunk no negotiate. This is something you might consider doing if you're connecting a Cisco switch to another vendor switch, or you're connecting a switch that you manage to a switch that somebody else manages. Personally, I don't like to use DTP in practice. I always manually configure my trunk ports. I find it has a lower chance of security problems, like configuring a trunk link where there isn't supposed to be one. It's really up to your preference though. There are two more quiz questions for you to think about. Perhaps think about question nine in particular, which involves adding more VLANs to a trunk link without breaking the ones that are already there. There's another way that you can test your skills. Most of the videos in this series will have a lab accompanying them on networkdirection.net. I've built them using the Cisco CML Lab software, but you can use another product if you want. Your options include GNS3, EVNG, and Packet Tracer. In this particular lab, you have a customer who wants this network built. You need to configure the four switches to meet their requirements. Once that's done, you can try out some troubleshooting. These labs are usually reserved as a bonus for Patreon supporters, but this one's available for everyone so you can see if you like it.